So in this video, we will start to look at more of the details of regression trees. Specifically, we will uh, look at how we can write down the model mathematically and um, the loss that we're going to use to build or construct um, a regression tree. So let's think first think about how we're going to represent this model uh, mathematically. Let's say that um, this is our feature space. And let's say that we've um, broken down this feature space uh, in these um, um, in these blocks. Okay, so we have a decision tree, and the decision tree has um, broken down the input feature space into these blocks. Where this might be region number one, and inside region number one, we assign to any data point falling in region number one, we can uh, assign the value. C1. So anything landing in there, it's a regression problem that will be predicted to have a value of C1, output value of C1. This might be a region 2, and in that region we predict uh, any point landing in that region gets C2. Similarly, this is region 3, C3, region 4, um, C4, and this might be region 5. Okay, now for some uh, new input X, Right, so we have our model. For some new input x, what would be the output of um, this model? And we want to write that in a mathematical form. So we will use f to represent our model, as we've done in previous videos. Um, and in general, let's say that we have m regions. Okay, The model separates the input space into m regions, where in this case m is equal to 5. So what we will do is the prediction of the model is going to be the sum over all of those regions. So from little m equal to 1 up to big M. And then what we will do is to get out the prediction, we will just use cm times the indicator function um, that x is within that region, rm. Okay, so let's just talk through this. The indicator function returns a 1 if the statement inside the indicator function is true. Okay, so if we have some input, okay, and that input actually lies within the region Rm, then that will return a 1. Okay, for any other region, that will then return a 0. Okay, so let's, um, let's have a little example. Let's say we've, we get a new input and the input lies there. Then we're going to sum, okay, over all the regions from 1 to 5, okay, and within each region we're going to check, does this data point x, does that lie inside uh, the region, okay. So does it lie inside region number 1? No, so that's 0 and nothing, okay, so we don't get anything added to uh, the model output at that point. Does it lie in region 2? No, nothing, okay. Does it lie in region 3? No, nothing. Region 4? Now the indicator function returns a 1, okay? And we take that 1 and we multiply that with what? With C4, okay? So now we've got C4. Then we ask, does it lie in region 5? It doesn't, so this indicator function returns 0. And the overall model then just returns C4, which is exactly what we would expect from our model. Of course, when we start with uh, decision trees, we just get the data. We don't know the regions. We don't know the Cs. Um, but if I told you the regions and the Cs, then you could get the output of the model. Okay, so how will we actually construct these regions? How will we learn uh, the different parameters of the model? So like with any machine learning um, algorithm, we need a, a, a metric for how well this model is performing. We need a loss and we will try and optimize um, this loss. So we're trying to do what? We're trying to do regression. So what loss will we use? Um, I think you can kind of guess we're going to use a squared loss. Okay, so um, the loss in this case will be the sum over all our training data points. Okay, um, for each training data point we have a target value Okay, which we're trying to predict. Okay, and then we subtract the prediction of our model for that um, specific training data point, and we square that value, and that will be our loss. What are the parameters of the model that we are trying to optimize? There are really two sets of parameters here. 
The one is the regions, right? I need to figure out where am I going to place these straight axis aligned boundaries in order to separate my input space. So the parameters are R1 up to Rm. The other thing we don't know is the values that are assigned within each region, right? So in this example, we have a C1, a C2, C3, C4, and C5. What are those values? That's the other thing that we will have to learn. So from C1 up to Cm. And if we want to be a little bit more precise, we can um, talk about these sets of parameters together and bunch them all into a theta, okay? And um, then we can um, also more precisely write out the loss. So the loss is really a function of theta. For a specific data set, then different choices for the regions and for the Cs will give you a different um, value for the loss. And then the model prediction is also actually um, a function of the model parameters. Okay, now sometimes, and you'll see this in the uh, rest of this video, sometimes I just drop the theta and the theta, but you know that the model prediction depends on uh, the model parameters and the loss also depends on the current model parameters. So what's the question? The question is, how do we figure out the regions and the Cs? Let's simplify the problem a little bit and then just see what happens. So what if I gave you a tree, right? I told you that we have a tree that separates out the input uh, in this fashion, right? So I tell you the regions, okay? And I, um, I give you these boundaries, but I don't tell you the values that the model predicts within each region. In other words, you know the Rs, but you don't know the Cs, okay? What would you do in that case, right? Um, so it's actually relatively easy to deal with this problem. Let's just write out the loss a little bit more, okay? So what I will do is I will substitute this into F here, and that gives us the following equation. Now, if I gave you uh, the regions, if I gave you the regions, then you could actually uh, analytically go and optimize the loss. If I've told you the RMs, you can take this loss, you can differentiate with respect to CM, and then you will see that um, the value, the optimal value for each CM, so if we knew the regions, uh, you can actually go and prove that the best um, choice to make is to assign to each region the average value that the data points in that region takes on. In other words, if I told you I'm splitting up this space like this, then the best value to assign to C2 is just the average of the Ys for these three points. Okay, and that actually makes, that makes a lot of sense, but you can go and prove it if you wanted to. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to add up for all the Xs, which lands within that region, Rm, okay? For all of those Xs, you're going to add up their corresponding target values, and you're going to take the average of that. Okay, so NM here, that's the number of training items, um, training items uh, in region M. Okay. That's if we knew um, the regions. Then if I gave you the regions, then in this region, you just add up uh, all the y's in that region and you divide by the number of points. In this region, you just add up the y's of these three um, and divide by the number of points. In this region, you just take the average y of all of those points and that's what you predict for CM. The problem is, of course, we don't know the regions up front. All we're given is just these data points, okay? And we're not told the r's and we're not told the c's and we need to figure out how to divide up the feature space and then assign the c's to the different uh, areas. One strategy could be the following. Let's just carve up the space and partition it in every possible way that we can, right? So here is one way of partitioning the space. We partition it like this way, we calculate the Cs and we know how to do that. And then for that partitioning, for this specific partitioning, we calculate the value of the loss. But then we also consider a different partitioning. We consider splitting up the region uh, maybe like, um, like so. 
okay? And then for that partitioning, we also calculate the value of the loss, okay? We could have also split it up differently, so we can also partition it um, like so. Uh, maybe the decision boundary goes here, and then here, and then there, okay? And then maybe, maybe even boundary there, okay? We could have also done that partitioning. So again, we consider that partitioning, we calculate the Cs for that green partitioning. We know how to calculate the Cs and we calculate the value of the loss if we did split up the regions like that. And then the problem is actually quite simple. All we need to do is we need to consider every possible partitioning, calculate the value of the loss for that partitioning and pick the best one. Now that sounds sensible. Um, the problem with that is that if you have um, a lot of different data points, okay, and a lot of different features, then very, very quickly that becomes computationally impossible. You basically need an infinite amount of time to consider all the different partitionings. So instead of doing that, we will um, basically use a greedy algorithm, which doesn't necessarily lead to the overall best solution, but is something that we can do in a realistic um, amount of time and that's what we'll look at in the next video.